This is the palatial house that millionaire Mortimer Mula built. This is a window in the palatial house that millionaire Mortimer Mula built. And this is the shade of the window in the room of Melody Mula, Mortimer's delightful but delicate daughter, who's built pretty good herself. Unfortunately for her, she's been sheltered from the world and treated like an invalid for some 18 years ever since she came down one day with a bad case of Rosiola Infantum commonly referred to as diaper rash. Meet the family physician, Dr. Crookshank, with accent on the first syllable. He made a house call here the day Melanie was born and hasn't left yet. Let's face it, inventing phony ailments for the poor girl is a full-time occupation. Well, well, here comes habeas corpus, Mortimer's trusted lawyer who doesn't quite trust Dr. Crookshank. Somehow, he feels they should get another opinion. I'll give you another opinion, folks. Get rid of that quack and give Harold a crack. Lucky for you and for our story, they just took my advice. But crafty old Dr. Crookshank knows all about our plan and he's not about to roll out the welcome mat for the consulting physician. You want to know who that's going to be? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, it's your friend and mine, honest, reliable Dr. Harold, who got the call from old man Moolah in the middle of breakfast, right between the stewed prunes and the scrunchy granola. I've heard of packing a lunch before, but this is carrying things too far. Hold it, Harold. You forgot your medicine bag. What's this? Since when are they gift wrapping traffic tickets? Oh, this guy is a million laughs. He brought Harold a sack full of scrambled eggs. Must have that protein for breakfast. made it to the Moolah Mansion. Goody! Now we'll find out who's really sick around here. Jumping germicide. Will you look at Melanie's medicine? Crookshank must be getting a kickback from the drugstore.
Our boy seems to have the kind of bedside manner that'll cure anything. You know what they call doctors who act this way? Definite marriage material. This lovey-dovey routine isn't going over with the old man at all. Buzz off, he says, and never darken my door again. Later that night, while Harold is still waiting for his check, Melanie sneaks down from her room. What does she want? Another treatment? Well, one thing is certain, Harold is no general practitioner. He's a heart specialist. Hey, if this is a shotgun wedding, somebody is obviously using the wrong kind of weapon. are all over the place looking for an escaped lunatic. If you ask me, he's probably upstairs writing the plot of this picture. Say, Harold seems to be getting an idea. Well, I'm certainly glad somebody is. He's decided that all of this excitement has done miracles for Melanie. Who knows, a little madness a day may keep the doctor away. I suppose Harold's Halloween tricks may be the perfect treat for little Melanie to bring the rosy glow back to her cheeks. Frankly, I can get the same effect from a couple of tall ones on the rocks.
Here comes a moment for serious reflection. Melanie sees Harold freaking out in the mirror. Now she knows that crazy kid did it all for her. Say, could this be conniving old Dr. Cruikshank trying to sneak out of the house? Well, it isn't Florence Nightingale. When Melanie's daddy asks for an explanation, Crookie explains he must resign from the case for religious reasons. He's a devout coward. Goodness, I'm afraid Mortimer Mula doesn't seem to have all of his marbles if he needs a corny device like a flashback to realize that Harold's brought about some heavy changes in Melanie. Doesn't this ding-dong ever know when he's had it? Harold finally has to ask the family pooch to throw him out by the seat of his pants. And so, at our happy ending, all that remains behind of Dr. Cruikshank is just that, the seat of his pants. Believe me, folks, there's a lot you can say about Rosita Runway. In the first place, she's very exciting. Come to think of it, she's pretty exciting in the second place, too. Rosita is an exotic dancer, which is somewhere between a prima ballerina and a stripper. Look who's got a date with Rosita. If he can ever get past Michelangelo here. Harold, didn't anyone ever tell you it's unlucky to walk under a ladder? I guess he didn't hear me. These are silent pictures, remember? The traffic's pretty heavy around Rosita's pad. You've got to take a number to get inside.
pardon me for intruding, but I wonder if Harold knows that vase cost more than $10,000. That's a lot of money, but it is a pretty vase, isn't it? Wasn't it? By the way, this is the famous Italian count, Andy Pasto, a man with a cold heart and a hot temper who strikes fear in the hearts of Rosita's passionate playmates upstairs. Continental, where Rosita does her dance every night. It's a real fancy place with fantastic food. I never ate a whole meal there, but the gravy stains on the menu were delicious. Rosita won't let Harold come in till he ditches the count. Well, she's got some nerve. Serves him right. That's what Harold gets for wearing a morning suit in the afternoon. They figure he's got to be the new band leader who hasn't shown up yet. vicious villain Andy Pasto isn't down for the count yet. There he goes, threatening the cast and pulling his rank. Believe me, I haven't seen anyone that rank in ages. Friends, I've just been informed that nobody could come up with a finish for this story, so Harold simply goes into hiding. He might just as well. I'm a basket case already. Looks like everything's in the bag for today, folks. But we'll have another go-round next time. Stand by, and we'll show you some samples of what you might see. Music